Did James Webb's space telescope just find life on Europa? This week on Today in Space, we are talking about the latest discovery by JWST that detected carbon dioxide in Europa, one of the moons around Jupiter. We're going to talk about what James Webb Space Telescope is and what it's doing looking at one of the moons of our planets, what Europa is, and we're going to talk about what the discovery was and why that's important and why James Webb Space Telescope is one of the most amazing pieces of space technology that we've had in a very, very long time. So buckle up, let's dive into this one, and welcome to Today in Space. All right, folks, welcome again to Today in Space. I am your space science podcast host from the East Coast, Alex Giorfanos. And this week we're talking about James Webb and Europa. So let's talk about the what before we talk about the why. Let's start with JWST. The James Webb Space Telescope is an infrared observatory orbiting the sun at Lagrange Point 2, about 1 million miles from Earth. Launched December 25th, Christmas morning, 2021, at 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time aboard an Ariane 5 rocket. And once it was out there in orbit, it unfolded like the most expensive origami ever done in space remotely. And there are 18 individually individual primary mirrors to the telescope itself. And on board is some of the most advanced technology we've ever had on a telescope in space. Its mission is to find the first galaxies that formed in the early universe, which they're already starting to learn that they started way earlier than we expected, which is going to rewrite all the books uh, for the development of the universe and galaxies, because now we have to understand why it happened earlier. And it's also to help see stars forming in planetary systems, so we have a better understanding of when habitable life can exist and what these planet systems look like throughout their duration, so we have a better idea of what we're looking for. James Webb Space Telescope also complements and extends the Hubble Space Telescope with longer wavelength coverage and greatly improved sensitivity, which is the opposite of what a lot of folks are when they talk about this, is that, you know, Hubble is going to be replaced by James Webb, but they, they are completely different wavelengths, and they do completely different things, so together we get to learn more about the stuff we're looking at. And in that vein, James Webb Space Telescope is now looking at these exoplanets, and it's allowing us to uniquely identify the compounds in the exoplanet atmospheres, and in this case, even one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. So, now that we know what JWST is, what is Europa? Europa is a moon of our most massive planet in the solar system, Jupiter, most likely comprised of silicate rock, but covered in an ocean with a layer of ice, slightly smaller than the moon, just over 31 kilometers, or 1,900 miles in diameter, it's the sixth largest moon and 15th largest object in the solar system. It is also more massive than all known moons in the solar system, smaller than itself, combined. So it's really the last largest moon of our whole solar system by a large margin. Europa also has an outer layer of water estimated around 100 kilometers or 62 miles thick, which could be comprised part frozen crust and part liquid ocean underneath the ice. Magnetic field data from the Galileo orbiter found that Europa has an induced magnetic field through interaction with Jupiter's magnetic field, which would lead to a salty liquid ocean. Portions of the icy crust are estimated to have rotated over time, which would mean that the ice is not necessarily attached to the mantle, which would indicate the floating ice surface around the outside, the subsurface liquid ocean, a rocky mantle, and a metallic core. So what is it about Europa that's intrigued us enough to spend the really critical time of JWST observing it? Well, Europa has been something that we've been looking at for a while. Again, the Galileo space probe gave us a ton of information from 95 to 2003, and missions like Juno that are there currently are continuing to observe Europa as things pass by. But we're talking about water plumes from the subsurface ocean going through these cryovolcanoes of the crusted water surface, and then we're seeing these emissions, and we've been picking up 
the signs of what could be life that could exist under an ocean. And there's even been some sci-fi movies, some that are pretty terrible, about Europa and about what we would find if we went there. There's also a mission called the Europa Clipper, which is close, very, very close to launching, I believe, aboard a Falcon Heavy. And that would give us a much better close-up view, a mission dedicated to observing Europa. So that leads us to what James Webb Space Telescope found. This image here that was captured of Europa with James Webb Space Telescope's near camera, the near infrared camera, it shows us this chaos terrain, which again, we were talking about the ice rotating around as the ocean is, uh, the subsurface ocean is moving around with activity, heating up, cooling down. This ice, this white section of the ice, is carbon dioxide. We're carbon-based life forms. So finding carbon dioxide in the ocean, which is where we would expect the life to be, right underneath that cap of ice, that is rolling up with the ice. We're seeing the evidence right there. So why is this important that we found carbon dioxide on Jupiter's moon Europa? We kind of touched it on already, but it's evidence that a place that astronomers have been looking and, and most likely would have told you if there's some place in our solar system other than Earth where life could be, it would be Europa. And before that, there really wasn't any evidence, but scientists had hunches. This is the first time that we're seeing the evidence of carbon on a planet with water, which is one of the other ingredients we know that's required for life as we know it to exist. We've now confirmed within minutes of James Webb Space Telescope looking at this. It's upended all the previous observations and changed the way that we can look at Europa. And if we're talking about alien life and finding finding life outside of Earth, everyone wants to talk about aliens and stuff like that. We might have an alien pool in our backyard where this underwater life is existing, might be built of the same DNA as us and require the same ingredients that we require in our solar system to survive. So that's why this discovery is super important. And it's also why James Webb Space Telescope is so important. With just that simple different spectrum of the infrared light and what the position of James Webb Space Telescope at Lagrange Point 2, where it gets to use its sun shield to block out all the light in front of it so that it can get the most clear picture and gather the infrared waves as an observation this amazing piece of space technology not only helps us look as far back into the start of our universe with the Big Bang, it's also helping us look in our own stellar backyard to give us, at an instant's notice, way more information than we've had. So let's take a quick break from the episode to talk about the new merch. That's right. Today in Space Merch, the Starship pen is done and here you're seeing all three versions of what we have rud and black the galactic q blue and the terraform green these are the hexatubes that hold your starship pen in there and we've been doing some work to make sure that they ship without moving around so they're not damaged in the process and so that you can bring this around and another addition here is the Starship Tower horizontal display stand, which hooks right around the existing hexatube and allows you to space nerd out in all your glory and have the pen with you at your desk, wherever you want this to be. And once you're using it, you can put it on display. That's what was missing when we had the first prototype out there. But every order will get this whole thing. The price is still $65.00 even with all these improvements and because you're listening to the podcast, there is a discount code. Discount code is RUD23 for 25% off the $65. If you're in the U.S., free shipping. Go to ag3dprinting.etsy.com. Look for the Starship pen. Pick your Hexatube color and get one of these Starship pens. It's a great way to support the podcast and it's really the first premium merch we've done here. So, Every starship is unique. It'll come with a part card that will have your starship number, your unique starship number. So order today, get free stickers, and all of this amazing premium stuff for your space nerd needs. Thank you for all your support. It's ag3dprinting.etsy.com. RUD23 for 25% off and free shipping in the U.S. All your support means everything, and this helps us do a whole bunch of other stuff. But without further ado, let's get back to 
the show. Because, as we know with a mission like the Europa Clipper, it's been in existence as an idea for a very long time, and gathering funding for it has been really difficult. So now, even though the Europa Clipper is slated to finally launch on a Falcon Heavy, if this discovery had happened sooner, there would probably be very little argument for giving the funding to a mission like Europa, because if we do want to find and discover the unknown, having Europa in our own backyard, we can do a mission within a matter of years, then traveling to one of these exoplanets like the TRAPPIST-1 system, it would take us an extremely long time to get there, light years away, right? And we're not even able to travel at the speed of light. So we're talking about a decadal survey of another uh, potential exoplanet when we might have one in our own backyard with everything that we've been looking for. Life on another planet existing outside of Earth and its habitable zone. We might have one of the largest moons in our solar system with life in this ocean. So that is why this has been so important and is a really an amazing discovery. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about what you think. Are you excited about this mission? What kind of life do you think can exist in a subsurface ocean? Again, Jupiter has a lot of radiation as well. So one of the things that was kind of checked off the list was that with all that radiation, it would be tough for our, you know, to send astronauts to Jupiter in order to like observe all of this, where with a cap of ice around this, that means that whatever's living under the surface probably has protection against that. And then the radiation is supplying heat as well. It's amazing what happens when you look further and when you have better tools to expand your knowledge of what you already know. And that's really one of our favorite things about science is that we can take our, our small, limited understanding and get really far with it and then realize and learn something else that expands our understanding and makes us look back and think about where we came from with this. So another great, great use of James Webb Space Telescope, where it's not only discovering and, and giving us another view, another filter view, right, the infrared lens view of these planets and, and allowing us to, in the case of Europa, look at the surface, but in other cases, look at the atmospheric reflection as one of these exoplanets passes in front of a sun or a pulsar that allows us to basically screen the light coming through that atmosphere to know what's in it. So this is some crazy astrophysics stuff, but with the amazing Space Techno Origami Telescope, James Webb Space Telescope, we're able to learn more about the universe, but also our own stellar backyard. And that's it, folks. That is our Today in Space segment for this week. Please, as always, spread love and spread science and be well. Follow us on social media, Today in Space Pod on Instagram, Today in Space Podcast on Facebook, Today in Space Pod on X or Twitter, and Today in Space on TikTok. Don't forget to like, subscribe here on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. Give us a five-star review if you guys love what we're doing. And don't forget to check out our store at ag3dprinting.etsy.com or todayinspace.myshopify.com where we are selling our merch. Here is our Starship 3D printed rocket pen. Comes in just the pen or with the hex tube and the stands. You can have a nice display on your desk to rock out all that space nerdiness. And of course, we also have our James Webb Space Telescope coasters. And very soon, we'll have the model available for our James Webb space telescope but until then we hope that you stay well spread love and spread science live long and prosper and we'll see you on the next episode of today in space see you next time